welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. <laughs> Ali Lama face? I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get on some new positivity wave shit. You feel me? Like, if I exude nothing but positivity, nothing but positive things come my way. So. Well, that is a good way to be in my record. I can't really argue with that. Yeah, I spent too many years being negative. Excuse all the squeaking and shit. Okay. He's in the fix. Happy, yeah. baby. Yeah, you know, trying to be happy face. Trying to be happy face. Happy face. That, <laughs> that's catchy. Oxymoron, don't it? Hey, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We're right on, though. Get it. Oh, yeah. If I did get it in. Throw on the old man cardigan real quick. <laughs> Over there building those boxes again. So yeah, it sounds like of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Mr. Builder Bear, yeah. (laughs) Mr. Builder Bear. Yeah, man. man. How you boy be this year? I cannot complain, my good fellow. I cannot complain, good fellow. Right on, right on. How you living? Striving to maintain. The plan don't do no goddamn good anyway, so it is what it is. You said struggling to maintain? No, I said no, striving baby. to maintain it. Striving, striving. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes yeah, a lot more sense. Okay, cool. Right? Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Uh-uh. It is. I thought of this the other day, but I want to see if you remember it. Like, I remember it. Let me get the mic right. Hold on. I don't want no more tea, baby. I don't want no more tea. Oh, yeah. I be uh, messing with poop with that a lot. <laughs> she, used to, she used to think I was making it up. She didn't think it was from a movie or nothing. She thought I was just, like, playing around. It would just be a I was like, no, I got that from somebody else. I can't take 30 for that. <laughs> Good old Bernie. Good old Bernie. Good old Bernie. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. To a goat, a, a, a real legend. You know, I'm going to do more positivity. You know that in your life, but that's a real one. Mm-hmm. People seem to like mm-hmm. my positive vids. So I'm going to stick, stick on some positive stuff for a while, too. Uh, give a positive shorts with the, with the B&Es. It's a regular recorded shit. So. Cool. Mm-hmm. And player, I mm-hmm. like. If you like it, then I look. Hey, what's good with this good conversation tonight? I don't know what he just said. What is up with this good conversation tonight? Oh, uh, well, I know. I know my topic. I ain't gonna front. After I put the docket up, I really ain't looked back at it since. So. I know what you're on there, and I know that you got a segment in there with your topic, and um, that's about as far as I know. The last time I might have took a good look at it, I think you were doing uh, something about UFC and and yeah, fight and, you know, whatever's yeah. good. So whatever's good with those, and uh, that's what that's what the that, that's still oh, on that's what you. And that's what's goody goody then. Yeah, man. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Together, I apologize. I had to take a nap before we shot. I was exhausted. Oh, I wanted to take a nap, but I've been driving, so. so I'll I take my like nap. It's, it's allergy season, and I ain't want to take a nap and, and do like last time I took a nap with allergies. <laughs> so I said, I, I'm going to stay up to get it. Drop when I get up when we finish. <laughs> Drop? Drop. The last time? Hmm. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. 
this was it was a it was a couple of years it was a year ago, but you know. That was it, kind of, wasn't it? You're right. Mm-hmm. It's beginning to look a lot like for 20. Mm. All in this bitch. About two hours left. Yeah. Begin to roll the tree. Begin to get high like bees. Everybody, oh, everybody tell me. Everybody telling me happy 420. You got to celebrate. I'm like, I work tomorrow, man. 420 is every day. When is that? <laughs> when is it's tomorrow. Oh, damn. That's when kind of you know when you yeah. got uh, <laughs> too grown. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Didn't even realize. <laughs> oh, okay. Gee, this one of the only holidays I keep up with. Well, yeah. well as well, you really. should brother burned in early, but you know. I found out about Easter yeah. on Friday. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, my kids told me about Easter. I, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to make sure I remember when Mother's Day is and shit, you know, just trying to mm-hmm. stay ahead of the game here, man. You think about the other shit. All right. Oh, yeah, I know it's next month. Yeah, it's next month. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about taking a little vacay road trip. Okay. After what? The weekend, a vacay road trip, right quick. Change the scenery. Nice. Whatever. Um, I might be going down your way. I'm just seeing if I can make some arrangements. But I want to drive because... I like that control. I like that. if I want to leave, I just leave. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm going on take a chicken sandwich. Oh no, no, I'm not taking chicken chicken sandwich. No, I'm not taking her anywhere. Not anymore. Nope. Not. Mm. Is there trouble okay. in next with chicken sandwich? Yeah, we, we got in a dis we got in a disagreement, and I ain't really talked to us. I seen her one more time, and that's about it. Oh. Other than that. So I don't Major know. Major decision. Huh? Major decision. No. I, I made my decision. I was like, mm, I'm not going to text or like keep, you know what I'm saying? You feel how you feel. You feel how you feel. I feel like when you feel like yeah. talking to me, you'll text me and call me. You haven't. So you leave it alone. <laughs> well, I, think I, I, I probably, I probably text and say, hey, do you want this? the stuff that she got left in my truck or whatever and then leave it at that but other than that uh, I'm done I'm done I tried <laughs> I tried I'm glad you just stand up for your mm-hmm. I'm glad you're standing up for yourself there boss yeah man it's... yeah after a while, sometimes it's like you just see. I mean, it's nothing. I don't have like any harsh feelings or any malcontent. I don't. Yeah, I don't have no hard feelings or anything like that right now. If it was probably my younger self, I'd probably be feeling some type of way. But uh, we've been through no this. ill will. Just had to will yourself. Yeah, we just mm. maybe we ain't seeing eye to eye. Right. And maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. So I just leave it at that. Man, I was supposed to be. And you gotta eat the booty like groceries. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 no groceries. No groceries. Well, what really kicked it is like I just I just remember Faith saying what he said um his granddad told him one time, you know, about I had a whole life before you, I have a whole life after. <laughs> uh, you used to know yet. Damn right. You used to didn't know yet. I don't know yeah. yet anymore. Well, it used to change. No, goddamn mm-hmm. it, because I'm going to still be me. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to make it seem like we, like, you know how people, like, they call stuff quits and then they make it try to seem like the other person yeah. is the is the problem mm-hmm. or whatever. Y'all, y'all, were the problem. Like, y'all just didn't work. It wasn't like yeah, exactly. was yeah, yeah. Like I mean, you're not gonna That's see me. Good. You're not gonna see me say anything about any of my exes. Right on. No, not at all. You know, some of them we still cool. Yeah. Maybe nah, later nah. on in life we might get be cool again, but you know. Yeah, nah, nah. It is I one we'll never be cool. 
Oh, it is one book. My ex is living Texas. None of mine live in Texas, but there is one that will never be cool. But it's the uh, the others. They know who they are. They, we cool. We just chill. Well, speaking of ex, uh, and, and kind of taking a look back, um, I saw this video, and it was basically about uh, is society living too much in the past? Like, are we too fixated on the time of yesteryear? And I wanted to bring that conversation here. I definitely got my wheel spinning. Uh, what do y'all think? Do you think, like, so, and what I mean by that is, like, so you got all these reboots or remakes of old movies and, and stuff that, and people constantly going back in the past to bring back styles from the old days to make them hot now again. Or you got even on a, on a micro level, like people are always waxing nostalgic for like this younger year or this old time or, you know, a teenager be looking back. Well, when I was a little kid, you did this uh -huh. for me. Or, you know, a 20 year old looking back when I was in high school, oh, I can't even miss them days. Like, do you think we spend too much time fixated on like the past as opposed to like reveling in the present and, and trying to progress into the future? Um, me personally, um, just my opinion on the overall status, I'll say as a populace, on average, we don't do it too much. I feel like it's a, they try to, it's like a fine balance between what we live in and what we try to reminisce on, because I feel a lot of people live in the, don't, I, I'm not gonna say live in the past, but their great memories from their childhood or from their, their, their peak years they outshine what they're doing now. So they look at that like, yeah, when I was this, I was this, but now I ain't really do it. You feel me? Like they didn't transition their life as far as how they wanted to transition it into. So I wouldn't say so much as a major thing living in the past. I would say it's more reminiscent and trying to balance it. But you do have those few people who do spend a lot of time just purely, like you say, living in the past and they can't even be in the present. So like, forget a future, like their current is just nothing but their past. Back. I would say from my perspective, I feel like I'm a futurist. So I think we do. I think some things we do need to start looking in the past for or whatever. Because, you know, some ideas, some old ideas are just the way things are. It's just the, the best way of, like, handling certain stuff. But, all right, I'll put it as far as, like, reboots and things like that. I think they do too many reboots. Yes. When they do them right, I'll allow it. But when it's, like, it just seems like you're just making a movie to just make a money grab off the franchise yeah like that's that's annoying or whatever but i feel like i feel like i feel like if we as a society as a whole would think more about the future or whatever mm -hmm. we would be prepared for a lot of stuff that we've encountered within the past couple of years in general right COVID being the example or whatever. I, th I feel like I, I don't think it's too much that we, we, we think about the past too much or whatever. Um, I think that we just, we, we're not, uh, we're not accepting of looking at new ideas. I feel like, I feel like we're just content in this is how everything's always been. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's more like that than more than like, all right, this is how it's been all always. Is it a way to better, better that, you know, like, you know, what, what can we do? So in the next five or 10 years, we don't have to worry about if something random like COVID happens again, you know, we can be better prepared for that. And I feel like we more, if anything, we think too much in the present. And, and then when we stuck in the present, 
or whatever, and we want to get away, we'll go back to the past. We don't ever look like for the future. The future looks scary. See, that's my thing. I don't even think we look enough at the present. Like, even with the COVID thing, when it first started, instead of us looking like, all right, we got this new virus, this new mutation or some shit, it's coming out of nowhere. How do we stop it now? How do we prevent it going forward? We look back at the fucking Spanish flu. Well, I mean, like, with, like, with like, some things, with some things, like, I can understand your viewpoint definitely because you want to attack what's going on now. But if what you have in the past gives you some type of reference of how to handle what you have in the future, you would do that. Because say like you are in a situation now, at the age you are now, in the same situation, something like you happened in your 20s. You'd be like, okay, I dealt with this before. I know how to deal with it. You feel me? Yeah. But I guess my point is, or um, the way I look at it, like, all right, everybody's lived through the past. We've studied yeah. it. You studied history, like the. And, and when I say everybody, obviously I'm being general. Uh, I'm generalizing. You know, you got dummies out there, but I, I'm speaking to the, the the people who got some sense. Like most people have studied history, so we know what wars have happened. We know why they happened. We 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 know these things. But we so stuck on recreating these moments from the past, or like living these so called glory days that we stay just repeating that as opposed to like building upon that. Like even, even in the tech world, like right now, NASA is working on how to get back to the moon as opposed to let's go to Mars, let's go to Jupiter. Let's figure out a way like to use the new advances that we got to take what we already had and build upon it. Nope. We want to go back and do that again. Like, it's like we stuck in this loop of like, Let, let's keep repeating the same thing, just make it more technologically advanced. Like, like I, I don't know. I, I just feel like, in general, like, the people in this world are just really repeating themselves and, like, stuck on, like, these glory days. Make America great again. Let's go back. Oh, I remember I was that star football player. Yeah, but what are you now? Like, you, you, you're not going nowhere now. Like, like even face earlier said, like the people not progressing. So they, they like stuck on that yesteryear. Like that's the, that's kind of like my gripe with it. Like exactly. Like, well, when, when, well, do we, when do we look at, all right, that was great. Did that. Now what? Well, you know, just what what I mean? like with anything else, you're going to have some people who do just that. And that's going to be what they do. You have some other people like us, per se, who can see that and see that whole dynamic of living in the past and not progressing and how that can anchor, anchor you into negativity, what you had in your past, and not let you progress mentally, emotionally, and anything else. You can, But you also going to have that small percentage you have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. So it's just humans. I mean, you have those progressive thinkers who are gonna be like, man, let's go, let's move forward, man. We know what's going on. We we can we can take what we have and keep moving forward, and progress on top of it, and keep moving forward. You are gonna have some other people who'll be just stuck. I don't want to move forward. I like this. And this all the fuck I like. I don't want change. It was like this when I had it in the twenties. I'm sixty. I want it just like this. I had in my twenties. I don't want to fuck with this new shit. I'm good. Then you have some other people. You know what? I want to do some out of this world shit. Ain't never been done before. Fuck what we had in the past. Fuck what you think about in the future. This is it. But it's them few motherfuckers who think the past was the best, who can't, I say, for lack of better terms, get with the times. You know? mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's safe. Thinking nostalgic is safe or whatever. And I think the media and, and marketing knows that or whatever. Even if like, um, like, for example, like from time to time, you know, back in the day in the 90s, they used to sample the 70s or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We know that. Nowadays, now it seems like they're they're sampling 90 songs that we grew up with and they're flipping those pretty much. It's it's a formula, it's a marketing formula of like, all right, if we give them something to familiar with a dash of something new, we can sell them something new or something like that. And then I think it's also like. Anytime you have a new idea, 
or whatever, it it doesn't it doesn't become a movement until it it's it's told to different people and it grows and grows. So in that in a sense, we kind of trap because you can't be a progressive way of thinking is a rather new way of thinking. Or whatnot. So now if you got a new way of thinking, you're going, you're fighting against a human's natural, all right, this is my safe space content. I've been thinking this way all, all my life or whatever. And it's keeping, it's kept me safe or whatever. You enter something, introduce something new to them or whatever. All of their, all their alarms is going to go in their head and they're going to start asking questions and stuff like that, which is natural progress of things. But it's, it's just that we may not have, we don't have enough futurists. We don't have enough progressives or whatever. It's not enough all at once thinking in unison all together. Like pretty much that I feel like we haven't done that. But here's a question. If that's the natural way of things, if we just, are we going to always feel this way in in general? Like, I don't think it's a natural way of thing, man. I liken that shit to being a crackhead, man. Like, I know, mm-hmm. like, I know some crackheads that appreciate that first hit, but they still are now in recovery and they appreciate even more the fact that they're on the road to recovery and they don't look back and they keep going forward and like, yo, my mm-hmm. life is better now. I can appreciate the life that I'm living now. And even though I might not be this, that, and the third, it is this now and this is great too. Then you got other crackheads that are still out there in the street chasing that first hat. And I feel like the world is becoming a bunch of people who are still chasing that first hat. And at some point, like, it's I can see that. To come back. That feeling you had when you was 19, 20 ain't coming back. That feeling you had when you was 13, 14 ain't coming back. Like, that feeling you had in the 50s ain't coming back. That feeling you had in the 90s ain't coming back. Like, things are constantly shifting and if you constantly look mm-hmm. at the shit that's coming ahead of you gonna smack the fuck out of you like if we run it down the street and none of us are looking at some point we keep looking back we're gonna run into a goddamn street pole and gonna, and gonna flapjack our shit you know what i mean so like i i just feel like i i can i can appreciate the past like i don't mean that the past doesn't have a yeah purpose. i i don't mean that there's not things to gain from the past, but I feel like it's a fixation on it that's developing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, And that's the scary part of me. Anytime, it, really anything that becomes a fixation kind of scares me. Like, mm-hmm. nobody should be too fixated on any, any one thing. Like, it should always be a healthy moderation or stick. You know what I mean? So like, you-, you, you Yeah, I was, that was the word I was thinking too. Back in this, all this in the damn nostalgia, like, all right, yeah, it was cool. The shit going on now kind of cool too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I had a wonderful young life. <clears throat> My life pretty fucking great now too. Like, it, I, I, I don't know, but yeah. Stop chasing it also be where you, people. Might be it also might be where they are in life. So that that totally takes a play of it because. Yeah. You, all your good moments was like when you were young and it was, it's been looking ugly since like you become an adult or whatever. But, you know, at the same time, I can't, I, I'm just using that as another perspective. I'm not saying that every freaking human in the world is like that right now. No, I, I feel you. But I even think that that perspective is sad. Like, so make your present better then. Why why is your past the only good times? Like mm-hmm. what have you done that is caused that? How do you fix it and get out of that so that your present can be good? Like if you keep on looking back at how great it was, but you don't do anything in the present, then your present gonna keep getting shittier, which means your future gonna be mm-hmm. some shit. Like, turn around, get your head out the sand, turn around. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Turn around. Oh, my boy, my boy.
What they know about that there? What they know about that there? See, nobody else would have picked up on that but y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How we partners, man? And speaking of that, man, what's up, guys? Welcome to the party. Hey. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz. And I'm along with. A little bit more math is the other third of the partners is Pat Juan. Make sure y'all get your Pat Juan Musk. And I am along with. What's happening, man? It's the final third of the partners. Face in the place, man. What's going on? Happy face. Doing my pat on the bus. Reveal. Oh, the mini yeah. filters and man, that should all the be, little. That should need to be a gift. <laughs> pack one, one. I think I can make one. Dude, I think I can make one. He's a damn cool boy. I'm gonna uh, find one of them. Cologne making um, cologne making shit. <laughs> Make some pet one more. <laughs> Send that shit to your ass. Put the name on it. Man. Hey, man. <laughs> goddamn, uh, goddamn <laughs> Muslims and Hebrew Israelites can sell all them damn oils on the corner. I know damn well we can sell an oil or two shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put that shit right on the damn store. Artreclothing.com. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Pat Juan Musk. The official site for Pat Juan Musk. Artreclothing. By our by trade. <laughs> Patron. By our trade. I got one better. Patron. By the house of our trade. <laughs> oh, oh, Gucci. Compared to popular brands like Giorgio Armani. <laughs> <laughs> that shit at the end, man. I just thought of that on the random. You're not getting quality bitches. Unless you got Patron. Oh, my shit. I am. I, I, I am. I'm striving to, every day to be a more horrible person that's good at fuckery. Well, let's be a good, good, good. Let's keep being a horrible person then. Let's, let's go ahead and kick it off. I think it's that time then. Let's just go right into it then. <laughs> let's go right and fucking to it. Episode 73. Good we gonna be horrible people. I, can, I don't care no more, y'all. I, don't. I used to be a very horrible person. I'm in recovery. Good and fuck around. <laughs> Episode 73. We will be the partners three. Yes, sir. Yep. Be a more horrible person, man. I um I have I have joined the congregation of the House of Future, and I am a futurist. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna cult boy? The House of Future has a future rapper. <laughs> you in a cult boy? No, hell no. The hell does that mean? The House of Future. Living life more like future. <laughs> His you mindset. Popping pills and shit. But y'all about to no, say about doing pills. drugs and sipping lean, nigga. That popping pills. That that that, that no no. No, just oh, more, more, single life. more female. There we go. Single life. You dropped a damn. Guard myself. Uh, Guard myself, motherfucker. You about to go put yeah. your Ron Musk on and get some quality, bitch. I got you. Mm-hmm. Uh, quality. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> At a house of our train. All right. Um, first of all, I am. I'm gonna just pull my respects out for the legend. DJ K Slay, aka Keith Erickson. Uh, may he rest in peace. Yeah, IP, uh, IP to a giant in the DJing game, a giant in the mixtape game, a uh, hip hop legend, known to make some other legend, music, known to be behind the scenes on a lot of collabs and connections that people probably wouldn't believe. But like, yeah, he he was he was a heavy hitter in the game. And uh, salute to the god man. Known for putting every every rapper you could probably think of on a rap, on a one rap song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. He do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, rest in peace. Uh, I just I, I think I just found this off. Uh, found this out like uh, right after we did the pod last week. But Archie ever saw? We ready? Come on! Yeah, oh, may man. he rest in peace. 
Oh yeah, he 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 got shot to death by his brother. Mm. Damn, man, my my brother escaped on some Nino shit. Bro. Yeah, mm. yeah, he never been able. able. Damn, bro. Yeah, so I mean oh. that that I was like, wait, that's the yeah. we read it we. Like I looked at the name and I couldn't like remember the name, but the name was familiar to me, or whatever. And then I don't know. As soon as I saw that, I saw on the thing that said "We Ready," and it, the song just popped in my head. But yeah, I may rest in peace. But damn, but, man, it's something in the water, man. They putting something in the water or some in the food. Yeah. Increased the volatility and people, man. Like people are dying. It's like it's a lot more gun violence this year. So far alone. That's why I keep telling my family it's gonna be a really volatile summer out here, yo. Like so many people have died out here probably within the past years. week. The past week, like three, four people that got shot and killed. You feel me? In a in, in a very small radius. Like and it ain't related. Like two of them related and this one then this one. Like it, it, the deaths got yeah. to stop. Like, damn, like. Man, they've been wild up here lately. Life too. is worth more, man. Life is worth much more, man. Life is downtown, worth much more. Downtown Norfolk is like a goddamn war zone lately, man. <laughs> I went down oh, Granby Street one time and mm-hmm. I had to turn uh, another way because they had the whole block blocked off on there. It's, it's getting crazy. Part about it oh, these days, man. It ain't even no telling what's gonna get you. Like it could be some random. It could be a murder. It could be you kids mm-hmm. COVID. It could be you done die because of the flu. It could be like so much shit, mm-hmm. you know, man. Like yeah, it's like you just walking in a minefield every day, just hoping to June step on one. Yeah, perfect right. analogy. For sure. Perfect analogy. Dip tone to the minefield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Welcome no. to 2022. Well, um, to balance it off, to put in a little bit of bit of uh good going um going forward for cheer cheer us up a little bit. Um, first of all, um Pusha is coming out this week. Pusha T. Oh, okay. I was like Pusha T is Pusha coming out this me. week. I've been kind of Pusha waiting for this me. album. I thought it was gonna come out last week actually last friday but that's coming out and uh kendrick has finally finally god damn finally announced that he's going to be releasing his um last his fifth studio album possibly his last album um and it's coming out may 13th mr morale and the big steppers oh may 13th that, that works Mr. Morale, I think it's either Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. I, this is, you never know with Kendrick, man. You just never know, man. And the Big Steppers. <laughs> never know, man. I think he, it sounds like some old, um, what is it? It just sounds like, like some old band, like, you know, like, the temptation yeah, of like yeah. but if like you miles. if you All right. right on but if you've been keeping up with Kendrick a lot of his performances have like a live band in the background he have like Thundercat mm-hmm. on the guitar and stuff like that I know um he did that with um that untitled unmastered album or whatever and uh, um the pimp of butterfly or whatever so this has been his vibe so I don't think it's gonna be something outside of his vibe so it's just this I mean it's Kendrick title probably. yeah you never know and I like that I like that about Kendrick and it's coming out May 13th so that would be a good thing for me to uh, ride with on the road trip gonna be some bars <laughs> on there so if nothing else no matter what else will be some spitting on there some heavy do some heavy yep. dude bars gonna be dropped yeah yeah yep. and some thought provoking shit keep your mind crisp indubitably indubitably all right y'all uh, Y'all ready for the fuckery? You know I am. You know I'm ready to be a horrible person today. I, I'm, I'm on. Oh, oh yes. I'm with all the fuckery. Well, I'm full uh, started off. Started off. In words of the man the, with the red pants, I'm with all the goofy shit. <laughs> you know who else with the goofy shit? Florida. Florida, man. 
Florida. Florida man. Mm-hmm. Some, and uh, some of the Florida men in office um, rejects 41% of the new math textbooks because of critical race theory. All right, hold on. What the hell are you teaching about <laughs> critical race theory in a math book? Yeah, they, that's they, what they a lot they of the teachers that the white fours around. are keeping the black twos down or something. Like, what the hell is that? What, what do you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the where, where's the where where's the racial component they of say, math? They say the reasons for rejecting textbooks, including references to crit- critical race theory, inclusions of Common Core, and the unsolicited addition of social emotional learning and mathematics. It still doesn't describe, but that's the quote that they gave as the reason why. <laughs> they talking about what they doing. They talking about word problems. They probably mm-hmm. include black names. Yeah, that's the sad part. We we don't want I'm things. Pretty sure like they math. don't put shit in there. Or no shit yeah. about how the system is designed or nothing like. So no, it can't. Be no, nothing, nothing at all. No, nothing at all. Math books. So, Come on, y'all, y'all really this, reach it. This is the problem. Y'all, y'all really, Even really reach it. know what the hell they talking about, but they keep talking about it. Like, people mm-hmm. know what critical race theory actually is to be outraged by it, but they want to have so much to say on it. Like, people got to study first, man. Stop just talking and actually, like, do research. Like, because But you got to realize <sighs> Trump, has ex- Trump exposed that populace of the people who don't want to, who just want to be fed, whatever. So when people come up with this, like, I can just say this and motherfuckers don't run with it. Blah, 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 blah. And then you got a whole population of people who be like, yep, that's right, blah, 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 blah. Cause he said blah, 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 blah. And you won't believe blah, 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 blah. Cause he told me blah, blah, blah. I'm sick of the blah, blah, blah. I need some people with some exactly. knowledge. Come and fucking sit. Like, My son don't even blah, blah, blah. And he's fucking seven. Like, come on, willful man. ignorance. We grown. Willful, <laughs> willful ignorance and um, cognitive dissonance. At, yes, yeah, come at on, best. brother. Come on, brother. You hit the nail on the head with both of those. Yep. Yep. Governor Ron. Bliss. Ignorance is not bliss. Our, our country's in shambles because of dummies. Stop being dummy. Mm-hmm. Like, if everybody just actually read a book, did some research, use, use sense, like, we we can't just keep being blindly dumb, or we're gonna end up like them folks in Wallet with no bones and just all big blobs sipping sipping our meals through a straw on a ship because we done fucked up the when, world. When shit doesn't necessarily affect you all the time, you you have more practice with willful ignorance or whatever. It's like you get you, you almost feel like. I don't know. It it seems like I think I said this about rap sometimes too. It almost seems like people are in a contest to prove that they have gone through more shit than the other person. Like it's just a constant contest or whatever. Like I can see, I can see that. Like no, uh, like even even when somebody if you you ever like seen the conversation or say like in a person is just describing how they feel but the other person gets real defensive about it and be like well uh i went through this and this and this so you shouldn't even feel like this yeah 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 oh yeah oh yeah yeah it's a lot of that it's a lot of that it's 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 a lot of that pretty much and that's pretty much with florida and a lot of other southern states and a lot of people with willful ignorance some of them to be coming on my line at work from time to time and be trying to spew their political views and they be like all right okay yeah all right i fixed your um fox news all right get off the phone <laughs> thank you you're happy now that's one thing i can't stand i can't stand for somebody to try to push their views up on another person your views are your views. You're entitled to how you feel, but keep that shit over there, over there, over there. If you know I don't agree with you, don't try to entice me into conversation to try to get me to, to sway your way. It's not going to happen. Let's agree to disagree. 
Cool. Your politics are your politics, not of mine. I, mean, I hate that shit, man. See, the problem is people don't know how to share ideas. Like, I think sometimes in conversation it's just about sharing ideas where, like, I may not agree with your opinion, but now I better understand. And vice versa. Oh, yeah, I don't appreciate that. Still don't agree. Like, there's a lot of things on the other side of the aisle politically. Like, I consider myself left leaning, but there's some right wing things that I can see it. I understand. I may yeah, not yeah. agree with it. I may not think that myself, but I can get to why you made that conclusion if you can back it up with some intelligent conversation. You feel me? But yeah. I think that's the problem. People often think that it's their job to be like missionaries for every for every topic and every issue, like I need to go out and convert everybody to this as opposed to like, all right, this is how I feel. If you feel the same way, cool, you know, let's build more on that and, and see what we can do about that. And if you don't, then cool. Is it something else that we can maybe connect on? You know what I mean? But like, it don't have to be, I, you You gotta feel the same way I feel about everything. Just be a good person, that's it, that's it. I think. I, I think another problem is that I think people don't realize that politicians are not geniuses and their politicians are not professionals or um, how I can say they're not professionals at everything at like every subject at like, you know, like they still got to get counsel from other professionals. Um, about certain things mm -hmm. and a lot of times people think just because they have that status in the political world well they must know a lot of things about everything because the politicians Shit. work on everything right right oh shit man them politicians are the same regular ass people as you <laughs> pretty much or whatever they just <laughs> probably, probably and, and Tell it's just probably even more regular because a lot of times they're like experts in one field. So like they may be law expert, but when, you, might study, be a bit when more you study skilled. one thing, a lot of times you often become out of touch with others. Like mm -hmm. that's often why scientists are often out of touch with like parts of pop culture or, or certain references because like they so focused on, <laughs> you know, they don't have like a broad scope of things. And like, I think that's what you got a lot in politics. I think that's why, uh, Maybe last episode, or episode before, y'all were talking about like we need an every man, more every man politician that's like coming from just a regular background that's not maybe an expert in any one thing, but just as like a person that's lived life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're going to see things and be more open to even seeking wiser counsel. Like they're they're not going to be so high on their horse where they be like, well, I can just put this person in this position because they'll be all right because they my homeboy. They're going to be like, well. I really don't know this shit. I need to make sure whoever I put here really know their shit. All right, let me think about who's, who's the best at this thing. You know what I mean? So I think the perspective would be better. But but yeah, definitely a lot of dumb dumbs and experts on one thing, but dumb as hell on everything else. Uh, politics. And I think politicians think they're cult leaders at times, especially with some of the stuff that. It, some of these politicians be going for. It's the power, man. Case of it's, it's anybody in power. It's not even just politicians. It's, it's like, you know, the preachers. It's, it's power the, corrupts. Absolute it, power it, corrupts, it, it, absolutely. It's, it's, it's the, I have power over people. And instead of me looking at that as like a blessing, it's like yeah. they're choosing to follow me. I'm looking at that as like, it's something about me. It's me that's making them. So let me now that I have this control, like you get used to it and it's almost like a baby, like that, that spoiled rotten. Like when you keep giving a baby everything you want, it's hard as hell to discipline them because their mental don't even understand the no. It don't even understand that I can't do this or I shouldn't do this. It's just, well, I'm, I always, it, so I'll do it. And, mm -hmm. and that's the problem like with, with, with politicians, like they get, and, and the way our poli political system is fucked up, like, to be honest, like they have too much power over how the district lines are drawn to control, you know, their incumbency and making sure that they keep getting voted in. They got too much power over like it's too it's too easy for them to stay in power once they get there. So like that's another thing. Like it's like yeah. the court justice shit. Like the reason presidents kind of have an urgency to the way they move, and like you will see a lot of them, even even Trump, like 
it was certain things that he just had to give on. Because if he didn't, like, look, you about to get the fuck up out of here. That's mm-hmm. all the time you got. Whereas mm-hmm. a congressman, man, you got some of them been in there 30, 40. Lifetime. And they still, you know. Our lifetime. They, they literally falling asleep in the fucking meetings and shit, just saying no, just because, it, oh, a Democrat said it, I have to say no. <laughs> Is it time for my pill? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they, they like, and that's why the way we got shit set up is fucked up. And that's why I said, and it goes back to what you were saying, living in the past. Those people are literally from the past. Making future decisions. <laughs> With no understanding of the present. And I want to say this again. Every, everything and every reason why the world is as fucked up as it is now is because of those people that's been in that office. Because they were the ones when the decisions were made when stuff happened. So I'm blaming them because that's your job. No lies detected, bro. No lies detected. <laughs> and now I wonder who I in South it. Carolina was the politician that thought of like uh, the firing range was a good idea. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. Hey, man. I, I the ne- uh, depending on the crime, I'm kind of cool with firing range. Damn. Well, look, um, this one inmate, uh, Richard. I'm mad at no form of punishment. I'm mad at how the punishment is determined, like as far as like, the, the actual crime. process to get to, yeah. all right, you're the person that's convicted. Like, I want that to be short up so whoever gets convicted is actually guilty. But if you out here doing dumb shit, like, as a former lawbreaker, you out here breaking the fucking law. Take your fucking consequence. Like that's the risk you take when you live that lifestyle. You know that it's coming. Yeah. I don't really yeah. give. I don't have no sympathy for that shit. Like everything no I've ever done, I knew what could happen, and it was my job to make sure that I didn't get caught and I got away with, it. or that if I did get it, that I found a way to get out of it using the legal system, fix the legal system. Yep. Yeah. But. I ain't about to sit there and get mad at somebody getting shot at the fire range. They done sat there and raped some kids or, or done did some fuck shit. Like, no, nah, shoot them niggas. See, this is the thing. I agree with you there, but this is the thing. I understand the death penalty. I understand it. I just don't trust humans because there's been so many times in our system that we've, we it's every day we get uh, a report that somebody is getting a certain amount of money settlement because they were wrongly jailed or wrongly accused of something. And they were in jail for like years, like 20, 30, half their life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like- We are not saying if, that. I agree. I, I don't mm-hmm. think we should kill the wrong people, which is why I say fix this. System. Yeah. Like if they fix the way prosecution runs, the way evidence is handled, the way the corruption in the actual people who are picking these people up and you know, policing the street, then we have no issue with a death penalty. I don't think most people really have an issue with the death penalty unless they're a person that just believes in no human should be killed. In which case I respect that stance. Yeah. But like most people that's against the death penalty, it's because of shit like what you're saying, like where like innocent people are being put to death yeah. put on death row. And in that case, again, that's why I say like, fix the system. Don't get rid of the death and, penalty because we need something <clears throat> to get rid of some of these crazy motherfuckers that's gonna kill everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like mass murderers, they need to be in front of a shooting range. Like whatever you do should be the way you die. You kill somebody it's with a full stick up the honey, that should be the way you go. Like whatever it is, um, you take that. But these mass shooters, but these mass shooters are not even getting that there, though. That's, it's like a that, that that's, that's part the, of the that's the fuck that fucked up. Like that's, that's what I mean. Like we need to <clears throat> have an overhaul of the legal system and like the le- the legal codes. They give it a Burger King and and say, "Are you okay? Are you all right?" They trying to play them off like the heroes and stuff like that. All right, fire and squad for them. I can understand that. that. They need a person like me somewhere in the judicial system to handle punishment. A person like me, I'll never do a crime ever again. 
we going to get you right with punishment because we're going to be real creative. You feel me? We're going to be real creative with punishment. The prison is going to, the population going to be cut in half real quick. You feel me? <clears throat> real quick. Real fucking quick. Death row? Yeah. It ain't no long wait. We're getting you up out of there. You get on death row, you got to, you ain't even got a week to wait. They get you death row, you got to go out of there the next day. The next day, we ain't paying even the tax dollars to house you. For what? Next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't even gonna waste the tax dollars for electricity. I'm gonna have the forty cow waiting. Bring them out the courtroom. Death penalty. All right, bring them out. Put lay the plastic down. Let's get rid of them. All right, next. Nick, <laughs> hey yo, you know how fucked up that is. You come to court and you <laughs> and it's sentencing day, and you like, oh man, I didn't prepare for this. I'm gonna be all right. I'm about to be down for some years. I'm gonna be tough. And the judge said, hey, hey, Baylor, <laughs> lay the plastic down. <laughs> Nigga, what? Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. You're right. Go get face. <laughs> lay the plastic down. Lay the plastic down. Go get a new kind of face. The executioner. <clears throat> Rapists, molesters, all type of pedophiles. Take your body there. Yeah, man, I'm down. There. Brat. Yeah, get them all. <laughs> Automatic. Brat, gotta go. Automatic gotta go. <clears throat> Automatic. The air killers gotta go. Mass murders gotta go. Gotta go. See, I'm not, I don't believe in using my tax dollars, anybody else's tax dollars to house people who are truly guilty. You feel me? You're truly guilty and you, you did all these heinous crimes. Anybody giving you life? You still living. Everybody else dead. You supposed to be that's supposed to be a punishment. You live with what you thought. These motherfuckers don't care. They did that shit and they continue on their life. They got a new life in jail now. They didn't get an education. They got entertainment. They, it, it. Get the ass up out of here. <laughs> get the ass up out of here. <laughs> this up so, out of here. <laughs> so this guy, um, this guy, Richard Bernard Moore, right, uh, who spent over 20 years on death row in South Carolina, uh, he's, he's 57 years old, and in less than two weeks from now, um, he was convicted of killing a store clerk in, like, 1999, um, and he was the first person to be put to death in the state since 2011. He chose instead of electrocution he said both of them are unconstitutional but he said instead of electrocution he chose the firing squad okay um, um, you know, as long as he getting the hell about it here i i i am be honest with you man i'm i'm so fed up with the human race and the bullshit that we do i'm like yo now, you out here my question folk, and, and fucking with folk for no reason get the rub out of here now, self-defense folk, I ain't got no problem with that. Like, defend your turf. But these folk that just be killing and shit, man, yo, get the fuck up out of here, man. It's been plenty of times I wanted to murk a motherfucker, but I didn't. Could have murked a motherfucker, but I didn't. So I don't want to hit nobody. Man, you man, you out here doing stupid shit, man. Fuck about it, man. No sympathy for me. This is my only question. On the firing squad, are they doing traditional as far as everybody got a bullet, or are they doing a new age? Well, they, it's a random one guy with a bullet, and they don't know who got the real bullet. Uh, they have not described the like details of how they're going to do the firing squad. They just said this dude going to die from firing squad, pretty much. And from the, from the once upon a time, they had good. changed the procedure how they did it. Due to the psychiatric, to like due to the effects of the people shooting. Mm-hmm. So I know they, they said that. Get more sometimes, so I don't know they still do it. So they haven't had anybody die from firing squads since 1976. Uh, just a tad bit of trivia mm-hmm. out there. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, let's just say this: we haven't had nobody legally die by firing squads since then. Right. I know some niggas from the hood that uh. For sure. For yeah, sure. Caught that, that squad. Caught <laughs> that squad. Mm-hmm. Caught that squad works. Mm-hmm. Squad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Wow. Since we brought it up, I, and it's shooting involved. The baby. The the baby. Um, in, no, uh, well, he practiced his Second Amendment and defended his home from a trespasser. And he shot the man in the leg. Um, he, Did you hear call? He's getting better. Yeah, it was it was a recording of it in the background, and the dude was screaming in, in the background <laughs> that he needs help. And the baby called. He called the police, and just had him in the background, you know, that out there. But he he was proud that he didn't take a so that They could hear that nothing else was me. happening to him. Mm-hmm. So the dude could be and like, he, "Oh, well, he, and then he tortured me afterward." No, nigga. Mm-hmm. The baby says to the trespasser, heal, heal up and live, my boy. Just don't bring your ass back. I mean that shit. I mean that shit. Because I'm sick of folk fucking with folk. Just because somebody rich don't mean them that you supposed to go take their shit. You want to get rich, find a way to do it yourself, or get content with not being rich. But I'm sick of folk just running up on, man, you run up in somebody's crib, man, you deserve to get your ass smoked. And, and you're, then, lucky, you're lucky you ran into the baby crib, because you're running this one. It ain't going to be no heal up, my boy. It's going to be R.I.P., my boy. And nobody you, else you better come up in here. See, this is the thing. When it comes to taking other people's shit, you take that risk of trying to take somebody else's shit and them taking something from you. That something is your life. Because they don't want your valuables. They just want to keep their own. But if you come at somebody with force trying to take their shit, a lot of times nowadays, you're going to end up taking a hot one. Bye-bye. Is it worth it? Is it worth it, man? Get your own shit. Yeah, damn. <laughs> And then is is he lucky that the baby was feeling that way that day? Because usually the baby is like you did. Um, I'm I'm saying to myself, have you not checked his track record? 2018, the baby shot a man in Walmart in self-defense. He died soon after. 2019, the baby beats up North Carolina rapper who was allegedly mocking him in the mall. 2020, during the pandemic, allegedly beat up and robbed a promoter that owed him $10,000. In the words of Project Pat, how the fuck the robbers going to rob the robbers? In the words of Project Pat, <laughs> I need to realize when you're talking about the baby that Mr. Don't Play. Mm-hmm. He gonna fuck your ass up. Like he done, he done proved time and time again that he is about what he say. Like he, ain't, he is about all of that shit. <laughs> 2020, the baby slapped a fan, Will Smith, a fan at a show for having their phone too close to his face. He later he later apologized, like Will Smith. Um, 2022, this year, he fights Danny Lay's brother Brandon in the bowling alley. And knocked him all the way down the lane. Strike! While they were recording a reality TV show. Like, do your research with people. Like, I mean, like, him, yeah, there is people in this world that is just waiting. I'm going to tell you something. For man. you. <laughs> like, this is something ain't nobody. Two of them right here. This ain't nothing that nobody ever said, I don't think. I ain't heard nobody say it, but this is a tears take here. Don't try nobody. And I mean nobody. That kill a nigga and go on Vlad and talk about it and still be free. After that, don't mm-hmm. fuck nobody that get away with that shit. I don't know nobody else that got a body that done went on Vlad and then they still free afterwards. Everybody done got smoked or, or they gone after Vlad. That nigga still walk around. When you see a nigga like that, that's a that's a super nigga. That he is knows a, the law. Baby is a super nigga. He <laughs> knows the law. He is Wait, the future. Bro. That nigga is the T one thousand of goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. He's just the baby. Like, Wait till he the team. Wait till he the man. Field. The baby is a goddamn super nigga. <laughs> like you straight up. You can get away with everything. I'm telling you. You got them yes, lawyers straight, man. You got, I, I, you got I, I them lawyers. Like him, yo. Like, what, I can't say nothing philanthropic he done because I don't know it. But I will say when it comes to smacking, punching, kicking, or shooting the motherfucker, he would... He'll do it. So don't run up on him trying to act like you about to test him. No, it ain't no test. The only test is going to be if you got the quicker draw. Because that nigga is undefeated right now. He he ain't took an L publicly yet. 
Now, if somebody come out the woodwork with some footage that we ain't never seen, I'm waiting. Because we about four, five years in the game, and that nigga still bopping on Broadway on y'all niggas after he shoot niggas. I love that song, man. They got the um the Jabberwockies dancing in the, in the at the end of the video too. I'm always down. <laughs> the VA always find their way in every every piece of music. Somehow, <laughs> some way. I need, I need me a box with a Glock in it. And if a trespasser come up in the spot, then you know I'm going to pop in his eye. <laughs> he, he mean that shit. I believe him. He I bop. believe him. He, he, he is. Bop your Broadway. He got, he, he strapped up and he's lawyered up. He got to be lawyered up to, he, to have all that going Yo, this on nigga and is, has a, a, a prominent career. Man, <sighs> Got it. This nigga is the Teflon. This nigga is out here popping niggas and beating cases and getting like this nigga is untouchable. He is undefeated. Is, it is nobody else in the rap game that is undefeated. Like ain't that's nobody roll out. Ain't nobody <laughs> rap beef with this nigga. You don't hear nobody dropping no subliminal verses about this nigga. Like this nigga is undefeated, yo. <laughs> like no matter who he this nigga, no. this nigga, this nigga beat the gays. Yeah, he did. This he nigga did. is the Chappelle of hip hop. Like he is uncancelable. Like he can do what the fuck he want to do, and he gonna be right here. <laughs> I need me some shit with some bopping. <laughs> the thing is, the reason why he's un he's uncancelable because he's been the same baby. He been the the baby, the same person this whole time. <laughs> Nothing nice. about him is out of brand. Nothing yeah. about him. And he has good lawyers. You know who else got good lawyers? I just thought these these I thought these stories were hilarious. But man sues a hotel allegedly that he lost his hearing after a cockroach crawled into his ear while he was asleep. A man filed a lawsuit against the Sands Ocean Club Resort in South Carolina. Well, he South Carolina now. Well, he should. <laughs> As well, he should. Home of the firing squad. Now, now I'm gonna tell you. I, I I empathize with this nigga because growing up, you know, I won't always rich. And, you know, a lot of my family won't rich. So, you know, it was certain cousins' houses that you go to them. My mom would be like, you know, put the cotton in your ear and you go to sleep now. Make sure it don't know them roaches crawl up in there. Because, you know, they'll lay babies and shit. And, and this is exactly mm -hmm. why. So this man has proven my mother right. So thank you. I, I knew mm -hmm. the reason. So thank you, mama, for saving me all them years. I appreciate you. <laughs> I another person, my cousins, because I ain't they ain't have no money. Another person with a great no lawyer, money. and 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 I also feel like this person is um is a is an introvert uh, legend here. Uh, this or Kentucky, hero. Yeah, yeah. This Kentucky man wins four hundred and fifty k for being fired after a birthday party. He didn't want. Hey, yo, I heard this on uh Donkey the other day. I, I yes, I I a hundred percent agree. I'm glad they gave that they get this man his money. Cause god damn it, if I tell you don't celebrate my shit, don't do it. Like I got a reason for that shit. Like I ain't just a grumpy ass nigga that hate everything. Like if I, say I don't want to do something, it's a fucking reason. Like mm -hmm. leave me the fuck alone. Respect my boundaries. Shit. If you tell me don't smack you, then I won't come up and backhand the fuck out you. So when I tell you don't throw me a damn party, then fucking up adhere to that shit, especially if it won't like no surprise or it ain't like, you know, the day of, you done already planned everything. And then I tell you like, this nigga, this nigga had that shit in writing or, or like had an agreement with the boss. Like it was already on record that he didn't want that shit like beforehand. Them niggas just decided, oh, clerical error. We forgot. Happy birthday, nigga, and then got mad at him. That's the that's the kicker. How you going to fire me because you did something that I asked you not to do? Where in the HR does that, what what world does that line up in? What, nigga? You going to do what? Oh, no, that's what you're not going to do is fire me because I asked you not to fucking party with me. Nigga, what? I'm saving the company money. 
You ain't had to buy that fucking cake, Nick. I ain't asked for the ice cream. You ain't had to get them plates. I'm diabetic. Shit. <laughs> Nigga, I'm taking my fucking daddy. sandwich in my car on my lunch break, listen to my podcast, and then kept my black ass back in there for the fucking hour. I ain't asked you for this shit. Actually, I want a day off. Fire me. I wish I might. They ain't gonna tell him, oh, we were scared that you were going to be angry and violent. I should be. I should put my whole foot up to my kneecap, up in your ass, and wear you around as my new boots. Y'all seen these new boss boots? What? Hugo Boss got some boots? No. My actual boss. It's the newest and it's the newest in spring fashion. They all knee highs. Nigga, what? Kevin Burley. Fuck out of here, Kevin. man. Not your fucking mind. Wish I, I wish I might. Burley. I wish I might get fired for some shit. You better have, you better find me for some poor job performance. I ain't, I'm showing up late all the time. I no call, no show. I, I'm fucking fraternizing on, on the job. I'm. I, you better have something in that bug fucking handbook that you gonna fire me for. What you ain't gonna do is fire me because you threw me a birthday party and I ain't want it. Because I ain't want to hang with y'all niggas. Fuck you. It's a reason I kept my ass home after work. You done invited my ass out to Bennigan's 13 times and I ain't never showed up. <laughs> Why the fuck you think I'm about to show up now, nigga? Fuck you. I don't like y'all. I have friends at home. I'm going to go hang with my friends for my birthday. Fuck you. I never seen no old thirsty ass niggas like that. Oh, he didn't want to hang with us. That's nice. some old niggas that sat at the whack table at, at fucking lunch when they was in high school. Oh, good. Okay. He didn't want to hang with us, guys. We're going to fight him. Show you. You don't want our party. He had me a lot of ice cream. You could have had all three of your favorite flavors. Huh? Fuck you. Group morale project. Hey, that Kevin. And if Kevin I was Burling, and if I was him, I would, I would buy a motherfucking billboard that faced right outside that window that said that show me smiling like don't throw me no motherfucking more party. <laughs> I just had that shit there permanently, just look at their ass every day. This what y'all wanted, ain't it? You wanted me to smile, ain't it, motherfuckers? <laughs> you bitches. Yeah, you happy birthday. Because they don't want to hang with you. You corn Happy ball. birthday to Kevin Burley. Baby who requested his employer, Gravity Diagnostics, not to throw him a birthday party in 2019 due to his anxiety disorder, uh, according to his lawyer, Tony Boucher, Toe ABC affiliate, WCPO. Just want to put his name in there. They're lucky he so they can know. That fucking office up. Because as a person who suffers with anxiety disorder, I'm going to tell you, that shit is scary as a bitch. You come in there and wish me a happy birthday and trigger some shit in me, I might beat the fuck out of you. Then you really going to have to fire me. And you're going to have to hire some new security because I'm going to be to turn their ass upside down. Like, you don't fuck with people. Like, when somebody tell you, yo, I have mental health issues, stop. Believe them, nigga. That's that's them trying their damnness not to unleash whatever that mental health issue is on your ass. Mm -hmm. Like, let it go, motherfucker. That that's how people. That's how people end up in the front of the firing squad for being a mass murderer. Because you done pushed and pushed and pushed, and that last damn push. Okay, then, motherfuckers, this what y'all wanted. Then I got to kill everybody. Everybody, all of y'all, everybody, all of y'all, come on in. This is what y'all wanted, ain't it? Yeah, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me, motherfuckers. Happy birthday. Fuck out of here, man. I'm sick of this damn world, man. People, you just fucking leave folk alone, man. Back the fuck off, man. If somebody fuck you up for real, man. Like, yo, people is too comfortable, yo. The internet is it's the internet's fault. I keep, I, I, I blame it on this damn fucking internet, yo. People get so used to being on the keyboard and having no consequence for their action that when the shit pop off in real life, man, they ain't gonna be ready. Like, stop fucking with folk. When people tell you leave them alone, this ain't no internet where you can keep on typing and they can just log off. No, nigga, it ain't no log off in real life. They gonna haul off and knock the fuck out you. You gonna end up a casualty of a nigga like the baby. Like, stop fucking with people, man. Like, hey, leave people alone. Yeah, you can damn. celebrate my birthday because I'm gonna take my birthday yeah. off. You celebrate it while I'm not there. <laughs> you celebrated that y'all have a good old time show me the video later on i ain't gonna watch it on my birthday but maybe later on but oh. yeah have a birthday party without me later on. That's someone what tells you who they are 
Before they snap and then, you know, start the shooting. Like the NYC subway shooter. Y'all heard about that? I know he was down yeah. with Sarnetta and them and shit. You say what? I know he was down with Sarnetta and them. Mm. That, that yeah, he was, said that, they that had. Brother polite three guy camp. Nature boy camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some kind of beef with um Eric Davis or whatever. And that just would throw him off. And then the crazy thing about it is he's the one that snitched on himself. They, they yeah. said that he got a call. And he said, yeah, I'm going to be at the McDonald's. Um, I'll be here waiting. And they said that the only reason why they, that he stopped shooting is because the gun jammed. And he had ammo for days. Like, he could have kept going or whatever. But... Uh, I'm glad he told on himself. Well, send him to South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. South Carolina. Send him down to Dixie. Send him down to Dixie. Uh, that, is the, that is part of the road trip where I'm going to make sure I, I don't stop. I'm not stopping at South Carolina. Yeah, no, you. <laughs> I'm gonna stop at south of the border with. The, I'm gonna like stop at south of the Carolina. border in North Carolina. You just get right on through there, and then you fill up again. With... <laughs> you get to Georgia. Mm-hmm. There you go. No, not doing it all. At all. South Carolina, unless I'm going to Myrtle Beach. That's literally mm-hmm. the only thing I can think of in South Carolina I, I, I can ever thought of to go to. I've never been to South Carolina for nothing. Else. Not gas, not chewing gum, not, not <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> like nothing. Like nothing. No. I don't stop it. There's no need. I, I've, no reason. I've been in South Carolina, but and I've stopped somewhere. I, I know but we're up now. But I've never right. wanted to be like, oh, let's go there. No, like, no more than a day. No more. There. I can't no think of shit there that's like, oh, let's go to that. They ain't got no amusement park. They ain't got no nothing. It's just South Carolina. South Carolina. And Myrtle yeah. Beach. Which Down is deep. A whole other subsidiary because they don't operate like South Carolina because they are tourist attractions. It's mm-hmm. like North Carolina, but we can't, we can't act like ourselves, y'all, because then these people ain't gonna come back. Come on, let's give them somewhere to come here. Otherwise, these niggas will never stop. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, South Carolina. It's like North Carolina, but it's South. No, it ain't like North Carolina. <laughs> North, <laughs> North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I fuck with North Carolina. I do too. It protects us from hurricanes here in Virginia. <laughs> the way the forms, the way it forms, it kind of like shoots the hurricane back into the Atlantic. Yo, and stuff. <laughs> I like y'all because y'all protect me. Just say that Virginia uses North Carolina like <laughs> Nino used the little girl <laughs> in the uh, funeral. <laughs> that was I was thinking, like, I was thinking that way. <laughs> Come here, North Carolina. You gonna take these shots? God bless all, all the people and all the citizens of North Carolina and my relatives out there. <laughs> As you throw them in the hurricanes, way <laughs> willingly. I ain't throwing them in the hurricanes. The, hur- the hurricanes threw them in the hurricane thing. <laughs> that was them. That wasn't me. You know, Ho did that. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to go through that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the fuckery off with this with with this. We ain't even got to the fuckery yet. Oh, this is amazing. This is a great night. (laughs) Oh shit, nigga. This was that was the preview. Oh nigga. It ain't even my birthday, nigga. Oh man, look, I, I got you can throw I got me more, this kind uh, of party, bro. It's all right. I'm just, I'm jump, I'm just jumping around, yo. I'm throwing around, yo. Uh, the guy that that 
that uh, lied on ASAP Rocky about him cheating. He apologized and stuff or whatever. I would oh, say you know, the last... it's just just some random person. So uh, my hopes of them breaking up is gone. So yeah, let's go about. And I, I was lied to, and I feel hurt about that. That's some fuckery or whatever. Um, y'all remember the rapper Cash Out? Um, the Atlanta rapper Cash Out. Uh, yeah, cashing out, vaguely. smoking on that Keisha, or whatever. Um, so oh, yeah. he's he's been accused of a criminal enterprise of multiple counts of rape, sex trafficking, and rocketeering. What the hell? And, and that's probably how he paid for them beats. Because if he's been doing it for that <laughs> life, if it's an enterprise, he's been doing it since he first came out. I heard it right. I remember the uh, name, but I don't quite remember. Oh no no! It's, it ain't it, nothing to, is that the ain't ain't nothing to cut that bitch off? No, it's not that one. Um, smoking on that kiss, okay. something something. Well, smoking on that kiss, smoking on that kiss, right around with that needle, smoking on that needle. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. Okay, needle. okay, okay. Cashing yeah, out. I, I, I guess he told on his damn self, didn't it? Yeah, he did. He said he said need a toll on that nigga. Mm-hmm. Now, good day, and, sir, um, to South Carolina with you. Great to and, South Carolina. Uh, so, that's so my so new shit. Okay. To South Carolina with you, sir. <laughs> to South Carolina with you. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Someone's going to jail tonight. <laughs> Ain't coming out. Ain't coming out. <laughs> we are liars. Oh, man. Um, so Young Buck may have to forfeit his gold teeth in the bankruptcy case. <laughs> what the fuck you say? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, young Buck. The repo man coming for that nigga for, teeth. Uh, young he Buck He filed for bankruptcy. He, he, he may have to forfeit his oh, gold teeth. That's hilarious. Because <laughs> he filed for bankruptcy. You I, I don't care who you are. That's funny as shit. That is you, funny. You got to be yeah. shit. Yeah. Why would he put that out there? That's the dumbest shit. Why would you let anybody know that? Well, nah, I just got some dental work. I just didn't want to go no more. Say anything except, yeah, the repo man coming from my shit. Yeah. No, you know, I've been what that if it go, what so, if, it had, what if he had regular so veneers? Like, huh? you know what makes it so mm. sad? Mm. Young Buck used to be my favorite rapper in G Unit. Like, when they came out with that G Unit yeah. album, when that nigga had that guy down, walk with me. Mm-hmm. What nigga? When I catch the bitch, I'm a gangster leaner. Oh my god! And now this, then that nigga went to crying on, on, on the radio. Then he was messing with the trannies in the hotel. Now he done stooped to this. Then he made that whack ass freestyle. This nigga can't even keep his teeth straight. The, god damn. What was it? Was it the uh, the Bone Thugs and Triple Six versus he made that whack ass freestyle at the little flip? Yeah, yeah, that was a travesty. But yeah, he got a uh, he got to get rid of his gold dental man because he, he he filed bankrupt. No, because, because, did you call 50, gold dentures? Yeah, his <laughs> gold dental. <laughs> the gold dentures sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> 50 Cent is not going to okay any of his music coming out anyway, because 50 Cent don't fuck with him. And that's, at least that's what he said. What that? Yeah. And I'm going to top the fuckery off with some fuckery. Oh, so he, what? If he was smart, though, you know what he would do? He would mm-hmm. go back. He would, he would re-record all of those old, all of his old albums. Then he could own it and re-release the music and get paid from it. That's how a lot of uh, artists are now going back and getting their master. The only thing, the only thing about that is he's not smart. So yeah, we're gonna have to <laughs> gonna have to think of a different plan for him. <laughs> all, all his previous um, fuckery in his uh, track list says he's not smart. Randomly stabbing people in the swords, swords and in front of everybody, yeah, it's, it's, he don't do, but he don't do too many smart things or whatever. Um, man, 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 young buck, mm-hmm. young buck. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm ending the fuckery off with more fuckery in um in New Jersey. 
um, two women at a prison are pregnant after consensual sex between inmates. The inmates being transgender women. <laughs> okay, hold on. Say that one. <laughs> two women inmates got pregnant by two trans women inmates in New Jersey. Two women mm -hmm. incarcerated at oh, Edna so Mahan Correctional with, Facility. They incarcerate trans women with biological women. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Oh, mm -hmm. and they didn't think that that mm -hmm. was. Cause it, cause I knew it was going to happen, but I couldn't say it. Those are like also homosexual. all the way. Like you could be like, from what I understand, you could be transsexual and and still not be homosexual. So you could be like, like like a woman or whatever, but still be. Ah, mm -hmm. fucking these hoes. They trans. They trans mm -hmm. The strap on is permanently attached to them by bio, by biological means. What the, hell? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the state's only female prison have become pregnant. <laughs> um, Edna Mahan Correctional Facility. These two women have oh, become pregnant after having sex with a transgender inmate. New Jersey Advanced Media has learned. It's uh, it, 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 it knocking everything down. Mm -hmm. That's the only hard leg in the building, too. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't wait. Going to work. <laughs> they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait. They were calling. They were calling to let come over they, here, scissor this. Relatives, you something you didn't expect. God damn it. They told they were calling their relatives and tell them, "Hey, vote on that bill so we can get these trans men in this female prison." Yeah, my that's son, what they did. My son, penetration. I'm gonna cut your ass for real. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> That motherfucker. <laughs> that lady in there getting all the coon mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was a hey, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this coon was gonna happen. What, what that, cause this because this we'll get some coon cause, cause this the thing. This is the thing. It might not necessarily been the trans women that initiated. Oh no, it don't gotta be. No, no, no. no they, 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 might, they might be in there treating that translated like like they fucking like fresh Amazon, meat. And, and that's the first man that the Amazons have ever seen. Like they might be in there passing that motherfucker around. Like it's your turn. Like fresh You get a ride. Mm -hmm. You get a ride. Mm -hmm. They using they got you get a pee. You him, get a pee. They using him like a uh like a simian, like a rose. That's it. Like a like a FIFA. Where a sexy toy lady at? <laughs> One of them. Yo, did you say they use that nigga like a simian? Like a simian, like a rose, <laughs> like a. That's it. Them simians will fuck a fuck a woman up, yo. I seen one. Yeah. I give you some of my commissary if you go ahead and plug yourself in right quick. Them shits different. <laughs> Ain't nobody fingers moving that fast or, or come through with that fast. Lock, fuck around, get locked jaw trying to do that shit. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That shit. I seen some. I seen one of them Jones come with one of them rev up motors, like a lawnmower. I'm like, yeah, no. Nah, well, I'm pretty sure you haven't because y'all been married for a while. Um, have you ever? Nigga, so I'm gonna just say this hypothetically. Have you ever walked oh, into an apartment? Because you y'all been married married for a while, so y'all y'all might not have experienced this at all in life. Um, but. Have you ever walked into an apartment um, and the girl has one? No. I've to seen that. Was a, I've run across some toys in my in my single days, but oh for, yeah. one, for one, back when I was single, like sex toys were a thing, but they weren't as like mainstream as they are now. For two, when I was younger. The women I was messing with were obviously for the most part younger. So like they weren't as enlightened. Like there were some that were. And you know, I would see some things and, and play with some things with them and you know, show them how to use some things and all of that. But 
it wasn't it wasn't like it is now. Like when you had all these wide assortments, like the rabbit came out after I was already <clears throat> I, I was already in a relationship. You know what I mean? So it's like I've been down so long. Like I I I've kind of went through the eras. Like when I was in, it was, it was still like you know, porn on the internet was still kind of like fresh. You were still waiting on Napster or or LimeWire or something to download that shit on Morpheus. So yeah, it's wild, wild west. You had to wait hours for two, two, three minute clips. You know what I mean? With like that bullshit. So it, it, it ain't like it is now. So yeah, no, no I didn't come across that. If I did, it's now, a red flag, sir. It's, like, it's, it's a red right? flag. It's a red flag, sir. It's a red I flag. If my wife want to get one. I mean, I don't mind. I, I will rev that motherfucker up to the to the top. Well, in, in, this, in, in this case, we will get this one person that I've seen that was a red flag. I that I was like, oh, okay. Everything, you know, you know how you, you meet somebody, I, they I seem normal I until, until you get in the, the comfort zone or whatever. And you're in the comfort zone, mm-hmm. you 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 find out some shit. Yeah, yeah. Red flag for me. Like, whoa, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. A little too much. Nah, that's a little, a little too much. She, she, she a little, she a little, little uh, aggressive, a little aggressive, a little rapey. Uh, <laughs> she a little rapey. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm like, all right, okay, all right. Oh, Have you tried God. therapy? <laughs> you stupid as hell. Oh, oh shit. Oh my shit! <laughs> but yeah, that's the good and fuckery, y'all. Episode seventy three, man. These chicks Ain't is lying. getting I is getting it. janked out in the in the prison and by trans and, and and now everybody's at peace with the movement. Hey, Amen. Trans ladies need love too, man. Get your get your. Shit. I just feel mm. I'm just gonna pray for the children. <laughs> I'm pray for the children. That's gonna be an interesting. Children conversation on in prison is kind of mm. that's, and, that's and gonna be your a, parents mm. are in there so it ain't like you have a stable parent mm. outside for you to start off with that's kind of fucked up. yeah 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 mm. yeah they all both them children are banging oh, yeah it would have been oh, better if you know at least it was like a transsexual uh guard or some you know somebody that's mm-hmm. on the, that get on the outside and still handle business Got some insurance and yeah. some benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, we lost, we lost all them benefits. Shit. Can buy diapers. Once that shit become public, you know, it's lost all them benefits, then you probably go to jail. Last I checked, okay. ain't, no, ain't no diapers on commissary. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, they're gonna grow up like Bane. Oh, you think you're <laughs> from the dark. I was born in it. Born in the dark. <laughs> 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 to be born in the prison. Nigga, that was spot on. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <I'm bored. laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was kind of dope right there. <laughs> all my life I had to fight. <laughs> oh, all my life I had to fight. Don't make um, me feel purple. Speaking of fights, uh, face. There we go. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah See, uncharacteristically, I got a, I got a different topic this week. Uncharacteristic of me, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of sports, man. Bring some sports to the table. So, um, me myself, the only sport I really watch is mixed martial arts, and one of the leagues I predominantly watch is the UFC. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with it, but I know y'all somewhat familiar with it. Are listening? Because you, of y'all familiar with it, but Ultimate Fighting Championship is what UFC stands for. It's um one of the leading mixed martial arts leagues out there. Um, you got several others. You got the One Championship. You got Bellator. Um, now you got stuff like bare bare knuckle fight. Um, the bare knuckle fighting coming out. It just came out. They're making a big wave. We got a lot of ex UFC uh, fighters going over there. Some different. Hmm. I said you got the pride, you got K one. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, pride gone. Your yeah, pride got consumed into um UFC. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's they why they're doing the game now. Mm-hmm. You see, big, you see, big. They consumed with Zufa. Um, the people who own you see Zufa, they um consumed pride and somebody else. 
UFC didn't and they got all the they got a lot of big name fighters. This is what Alice the Overeem was over there. Um, 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 big Nas, Little Nas, a lot of um, fighters from um, Pride came over um, UFC and they got a couple of good fights in. Um, but main thing I want to talk about is their pay and like the under basic underpayment of their fighters is going on right now. Um, it's been reported um, by several media outlets, several different fighters on and just like different teammates of this under the other underpayment of fighters. For instance, like Francis Ngannou, he's the heavyweight champion. Now in any other sports, the champions they get paid the most. You feel me? They getting their big bank. Boxing heavyweight champions they getting top top dollar for their title defenses, and they get their top dollar when they win. So in his last title defense, it was a successful title defense. He only got six hundred fifty thousand dollars. What's the profit margin of right. UFC? Oh, they make big, big bank because you got to look at the, you got the pay per view buys. You feel me? They got all the, they got anything you can make money off as a business. UFC makes money off. So not only they got the fighters, they making money off. They got the pay per view buys, which they just went up on the pay per view um, price. I think they went up to seventy nine and some or seventy something. For the past few years, they've been going up slowly and slowly. And slowly, and everybody may complain about that too, but they get the money and they provide the, the top talent. So people are going to contestly pay to watch it. You feel me? I I mean, I, I know people yeah. pay, but I, I guess I'm seeing like, so like, I look at it like, you know, when they look at like the NBA versus WNBA, like, I know that mm-hmm. boxing breaks records, pay per view records a lot of times. Mm-hmm. It's such an established commodity. I don't know that I've ever heard of or, or seen a reported that UFC does stuff like that. So I know that they have like their audience and I know that they have a core audience that's very faithful, but how much is UFC a niche thing that like fight people know about, but like the average person, like I don't see a lot of UFC shirts walking around or like, but I'll see like a TBE hat, you know what I'm saying? For Money Mayweather or Money Team. Something. Mm-hmm. I wonder like, mm-hmm. I wonder when after paying for their promotion, after paying for their merchandise, and after paying for the amount of fighters that they they have, because like UFC is a, a one entity as opposed to boxing, which is like it's really like a bunch of different promotions that just come together to throw it. But it's nobody who really like runs everything. You know what I mean? So I wonder is UFC in a financial position to really up the Ante on their top. I would say yeah. I would say yeah because they don't allow sponsors. They can. That's why they control most. They control all the money flow, and that's why they pay. They, they fighters don't get put so much money on their payout because they don't allow their fighters to have sponsors. Where boxing and other mixed martial arts leagues allow their fighters to have have um, different and individual sponsors. Now UFC UFC themselves as a company, they may have sponsors, but the fighters themselves are not allowed to have sponsors. So that limits their revenue, the fighter revenue that they can bring in. Guys. So whenever you if you're not a champion, so if you're not a champion, you go into a fight and say you're getting fifty thousand dollars. Okay, you got fifty thousand dollars, but you still got to pay your team, you got to pay your coach, you got to pay your cut man, you got to pay your corner, you got to pay your gym, and then whatever's left, that's yeah, what you come out with. Kind of like the uh, like the music industry, like they're making the money to pay, mm-hmm. them. they're just holding it back and kind of like rationing it out money as they want to as opposed to allowing the, mm-hmm. the artist or the fighter to go out mm-hmm. so like an NBA player that might make a minimum salary might have 13 endorsements back home that allow them to still make a seven figure salary but these people they can't do that same thing is what you're saying exactly yeah. now one thing that is making a stir in this conversation even though he is annoying as hell is Jake Paul um, Jake Paul has made a stand on for higher fighter pay. He's challenged the owners of UFC to try to understand why y'all limited the pay or try to challenge them just to raise the pay. You feel me? Like he's paying in these exhibition fights that Jake Paul is whatever, whatever with his shit. The fighters that he's fighting against are making double and triple what these heavyweight champions in the UFC under contract are making per fight. You feel me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's man. He's what's the word I'm looking for? He's rooting for a fighters' union. 
which would be, I say, it got to be good things and the bad things if UFC or the mixed martial arts community goes for a fire union because different leagues, like I say, have higher pay. Um, Bellator is mm-hmm. Bellator, for instance, they they allow sponsorships for their individual fighters, so their fighters can make more money um, at a lighter weight. Um, as we all know, lighter weights they make less money. If I mean heavy weights make more money. Um, it's more draw. The more, I guess you could say, the more people you bring in, the more pay per view pay per view buys you 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 drum up, you get more money. So that's why you see more UFC people doing more. It's more talkative now. It's more of a show. It's more, more uh, put a show in like uh, Conor McGregor, the 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 brash, the talking. The if you see what he was doing with Floyd Mayweather, he gonna sell yeah, it. Exactly. Gonna be, sure because of that. Fight. How many people yeah, are because of that? Fight. I think that's my. I think that's my thing. Like, I'll, no, I'll we, look at a Conor McGregor who made see, him. Conor just started like that, though. Conor just started like that. Conor began the fight. more like that. Conor grew into that persona and him talking shit. That's what drew people into him. That's why you see people having that copycat image like Kobe Covington. The, the character, he's like, it's a character he, he put on, a persona he put on to try to draw in more fights because the more attention you get, the, of course, the UFC going to try to book you fights because more people going to watch the fights, more people view buys. So that gets you the bigger fights that you may want, make bigger fights that you may need, you feel me, to propel you higher in it. But you got people who don't do all that shit, who just about fighting, who just about, I'm in here working, grinding, I'm trying to whip some ass, I'm whipping the ass with my money. I shouldn't have to go and do all this talking and rah, 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 just to get the money I deserve for whipping the same ass, this other nigga whipping ass, but he just yeah, talking should. shit. Yeah, you should, though. Because if don't nobody give a fuck about how much you whipping the ass, then, like, you're exactly. not, you're not, you're not exactly. like I, I think like that's my thing like so if UFC give you sponsorship deals and all that mm-hmm. then the people who ain't getting no sponsorships because they born as fuck but they be they, but they 32 and 0 or whatever they gonna still have the same gripe like at some point like in certain in, in sports especially man like it's a yeah it's a how much can you do how well can you do but then once you do well if you want uh, if you want the bread you have it like life is about <clears throat> like how much is your personality worth like how much do people like you that's how you get jobs that's how you get promotions that's how you get a bunch of shit like how likable are you and if you ain't that likable then i'm sorry in life you're gonna have a ceiling on it you're still gonna make more money than the average person walking the street but you're not gonna make it yeah. because you might be the best fighter in the world that nobody gives a fuck about now, to add to the conversation, with the different leagues coming up, you have, um, they did a trade, the first ever trade between leagues was like uh, a couple of years ago where UFC traded Demetrius Johnson, one of the top, um, I, think, I forgot what weight class, he was one of, one of the smaller weight classes over the one the one championship, and they got, they got Ben Askren over the UFC. Now, Demetrius Johnson, he's one of the GOAT little fighters, you've been like undefeated for years and years at a time. Goat Ben Askren was supposed to be a a, a great ass wrestler, but he got dusted off in his first couple fights coming to UFC. Then retired. <laughs> but that oh, that but with that type of shit, it's opening up the round for like other new shit to come up. So with people coming into the end of the con, the end of their contracts in UFC, they looking at being like somewhat of free agents. And fighting in different leagues and being free to fight in different leagues and free to fight in different shit because their contracts bind them not to be able to do certain shit. So the UFC fighters, if they want to go to Bellator, they can't go to Bellator and fight until your contract's up. But even mm-hmm. then, if if the UFC chooses to resign you for a good price, are you gonna go? Because Bellator allows sponsors. You feel me? They got a different competition. And from what I've been seeing with Bellator, they got some good high high ranking competition, like they they competition ain't no ain't no hoes over there. Like I've I've watched a, a bunch of different leagues. Like they got a um this African league I was watching last night. Um they got a reality show on TV, something like um UFC got. It's on Netflix. AK it's um AKO or some shit like that. Now them niggas can't fight. I'm gonna be real. I couldn't even watch. I couldn't even watch two or three fights. It, it was like I'm, I'm a big mixed, mixed martial arts motherfucker. I, I get down with this shit. Like I can sit down and watch this shit all fucking day. 
because that's my sport. You feel me? Like motherfuckers watch football all fucking day on Sundays. I can sit down on Friday or Saturday and watch the UFC, Bellator, all that shit, the reruns, all that shit. You feel me? Because that's just my shit. But these motherfucking Africans, I'm sorry. That's all I can say is I'm sorry. They don't deserve to get paid <laughs> shit for what they were doing. Here's, Not at here's all. A, here's a question. But, um, that, that, go ahead. Devil's advocate. How does UFC make as much as a boxing event? I would say so on pay per view buys, but on pay per views because boxing of uh, boxing events and shit, they used to have their pay per views on the same on the same nights as UFC. But mm. but as far as a few years ago, as far as recently, they started changing the nights they have their pay per views because it would run over. Or mm-hmm. motherfuckers wouldn't change over until the boxing. You feel me? It was it wasn't a, like you would think being boxing is so embedded. It's such an old sport. It's been here. It's gonna have that permanent audience, but it wasn't mm-hmm. what they thought it was gonna be. You feel me? So change your nights. You still get the audience. You still get your pay per view buy. You still get the amount of money you're looking for, and you really don't have a competition on the nights where UFC just dominates day nights. I don't have. It's like I wanna. I'm all for the person doing the work, getting more pay. I'm all for that. But it's like, I want to meet. It's like, I can see boxing. Yeah, like I can see the, like, I want to compare and contrast because I got to see the averages. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the average normal um, amount that a a champion gets in UFC on a normal basis, uh, each champion, and then compare that to boxing. Or whatever, and then and then go from there because it's like I feel like UFC has way more events or whatever, like way more they events. Had, and, they had a, and they have a more, and they have a more and more now. You feel me? Mm-hmm. They got the um, they got this, they got the couple shits that you might catch on regular TV and the and the reality show. They got, I think they got another reality show out now, um, uh, on a different on a different night, a different network. Plus, they got mm-hmm. the pay per views every month, every um. They're trying to get one every month now, and they got the other shits, um, the UFC Vegas shit with the big fights on it too. So they, they, then they got so much, they got so much talent. They, they got so many events. You feel me? So they can keep drumming up the revenue, I guess, to pay the fighters. But I mean, at the end of the day, you drumming up more revenue for your business too. So it, I guess it goes hand in hand. But on the they, business aspect, I mean, I can understand limiting pay to a certain amount. All right, we got to make our money too. So shit, if we paying y'all everything, what we going to have? At a business, we got to make it. We want to make a certain amount of profit as well too. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to find some way in the middle. But oh, with the, the right now that said that UFC fighters can get sponsorships, and that's where a lot of them are making their money, which is why Conor McGregor and Khabib, you know, Khabib. In America, which, is, which is why they make they can make up in the tens of millions because they're they're banking off of their social media following and stuff like that, which is Khabib no fight a book. Well, he got his own fucking league now anyway. So Khabib I'm just, was a different I, money I'm just saying that it looked like yeah, the, the main more. issue with the reason why UFC fighters are not getting paid as much. For one, boxing is a lot bigger of a sport, so they have more money putting in. Like, their promoters are able to put up more money, et cetera, because they've been established longer. But for two, the P- the difference between the UFC champions that's making tens of millions of dollars and the ones that's making in the hundreds of thousands or low millions, it seems to be their popularity. Like, just like you got boxers that, like, you got boxing champions that, like, they might get paid only, like, three million a fight. And they world champions. They might be the undisputed champion in their weight class, but somebody else in a lower weight class might get you know, the fan. 12 million to fight because they they charismatic on social media. They got a big following. People see them on commercials. People see them here. People, like, they they, they get more name recognition. Like, at the end of the day, man, you pay with your weight, man. You get your name up. So, basically, we need UFC to be more... WWE, not fake. Hell no. Just, 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 just,
like Conor yeah. McGregor gonna get on, on on Twitter and he gonna talk back to his fans. He gonna he gonna build that rapport. Like mm. if if nobody knows you, I don't care how great you are at anything. Like recognition is how you you get revenue from the fact that you're great at something. If you're the best violinist, but nobody ever hears you play it, you just playing to yourself. Then like, what does that do for you? So I think at the end of the day, it's like promotion. Like the UFC is a big enough entity that like, if you are a UFC fighter, you already got the cachet of the fact that you're fighting for this company that's recognized. Now it's on you to be past that. Like I've seen the Ganu or whatever, he's starting to get his name out there more and more. I've seen him on like Hot 97. Like you have to get out there and like, get your publicist to kind of go out there and put your name out there so you can start to have people knowing who you are. Cause already again, UFC has this core fan base that's going to buy that shit every time. But like the general public, it's kind of like a hip hop genre where the dude is going platinum every time, but nobody knows it. Like, like Russ, it's like Russ's music. UFC is like Russ's music. It's he, he, he's selling out everywhere. But the average person walking the street doesn't know them. People know who Bud Crawford is more than they know some of the top UFC fighters. Like, it's just a name recognition thing. So I think if the UFC fighters, like, find a way to, like, become more marketable or, like, get with publishers that if they not necessarily the personality for it, that they find ways to like engage with the, the public more, do more social media Q and A's, do more pull-ups, do more public works, get into the philanthropy game, something to get your name out there. So people start to just know your name. Cause that's where the money gonna really come from. People gonna buy a pay-per-view off your name. Like I like him, not I like, like people like Floyd Mayweather or they hate Floyd Mayweather. They have a- Did feel. you get a reaction? Yeah, you got a strong feeling about the person. Like it's just like anything else. Like even with uh Joe Rogan podcast, people like him or they hate him, so they'll tune in to see Joe Button. They they like it. Like almost everybody that makes money at whatever they do and makes the top money, usually they're people that evoke a strong feeling. If I don't feel nothing about you, I don't know you. It's hard for me to invest any money in you. Yeah. They, I'm looking up their revenue for like the last year. They fell shy of one billion. One billion. Mm -hmm. I feel like they got the potential to. Uh, I also feel like it's a, it's a. What's that phrase? It, closed mouth don't get fed. Get fed. Like, yeah. Yeah, I feel like in that situation, it's probably good that the fighters bring this subject up because if you don't say nothing about it, then the UFC can't do things to go Man, to if help the, the contract, fighter out. It will be just like the music industry. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's a self-motivated thing. If you're going to sign that contract or whatever, whatever it says you're going to roll with, then it's up to you to then find out, well, what can I do outside of this contract to make me some money? Because you signed the contract mm -hmm. knowing that, all right, it's going to be a cap on this shit for me. Like, I I don't know. I, it's hard for me to keep this off for grown-ass men. They're like, how much are you doing? Like, I, I don't know your Twitter handle. I don't know. I, I've never seen a tweet or Instagram post. I ain't seen you on an interview on none of the popular sites. So, like, why would I pay my money to see you? Conor McGregor, hey. I know that nigga. He yeah. funny. I'll pay to see him. Rampage, Jackson, I, paid it. I would pay to see him. John Bond, like these names are people who've done things outside of just whooping mm -hmm. up their ass. So they gonna get money. Iceman used to do that. Like, do something. Make yourself. Then it might. It might be the team, the team that they're paying because it's now usually if you have a team, it, it's gonna be one person that says, hey, you gotta get your name out there or whatever. Even it's if- your person, it's, the, it's your management too. Because if your manager mm -hmm. ain't this is you ain't gonna be making the necessary moves you need to make as either. You gonna be focused on one thing where you need to have a, a wide array or some shit. Or you need to be focused on one thing mm -hmm. while he focuses on something. He or she, let me say. He or they she need to be focus on something. But, but if they ain't doing what they need to do, you ain't be making what you need to make. So, I mean, they need to be focused on shit. If this person, if my fighter makes what they need to be making, I'm going to make what I need to be making. I need to be on my job. 
this what I do know. Ronda Rousey got paid more for some of her fight than a lot of men get paid for theirs in the same sport in the same company. What that shows me is the only thing different between them and her is the fact that she made herself known outside of that sport so that the grandma and the auntie and the uncle and the cousin that don't really usually watch the TV will tune in when they hear her name. They recognize her. That that that's that's really the it would it, it come down to like that self gumption that 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 I okay this is what it is I'm either gonna keep rolling with it or I'm gonna do something. The people mm-hmm. doing something they getting paid ten million dollars and they not part of this conversation arguing about what UFC ain't giving. Usually the people that's complaining is the people who either didn't do their due diligence on the front end to actually read their paperwork or they're people who are looking for the the label or the company or the whatever to do for them as opposed to them doing for them. Um, all right. Now, now that I got y'all talking about UFC and shit, now that I got y'all on my subject, I right, do y'all feel like our players or not player, well, our fighters outside or personal life should uh, negatively damage their like legacy in fighting? Um, Depends on what they've done. I'll say this. Okay. Okay. If the outside actually affected their end ring. So like people who do steroids, people who cheated on games and, and point saves and just shit like that in any sport, I think they should be penalized in their sport because they did something mm-hmm. in their sport. If you did something in a sport, I don't think your sports legacy has anything to do with your personal one. Now I may choose okay. I feel like people have the personal option to like choose to not want to recognize your thing, whatever. But like, as far as it being an institutional thing where like they kick you out of the hall of fame or they ban you from something like, I don't feel that that's appropriate. Like okay. I feel like, like Lawrence Taylor was a, cra- a known crackhead and a woman abuser. Still in the hall of fame. He still, you can't take away them sacks he got. Yeah, OJ Simpson killed two folks. Motherfucker did rush to 2,000 yards. We watched it happen. Like, you can't say that he did do that. He could work for that shit. And admit to it. Yeah, like, it's, not, it's, it's like, at the end of the day, like, what you did is what you did. I may not like you as a person, but, I, like, I ain't, I don't fuck with Kobe Bryant as a person. But I do respect him as a sports entity. Like, I respect him as what he did in his sport. You know what I mean? So I think it's... I feel you, I, I don't like Tim Duncan at all. Yeah, like, I don't like Tim Duncan at from a, all. Personal, from a personal place, yes, it might affect somebody's legacy to me. But from an institutional place, don't take away any of their no. ideas or anything like that. Off, so if and they that, do stupid off the field, like that's their personal life that they personally have to atone for. I don't. They don't owe me anything personally. That's that's how I feel and with see. anything in the industry. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That goes with like, all right, since it's an easy target. Uh, not to call him a target, you no know, disrespect. Will Smith, for example, he did what he did, but you can't deny all the shit he's been doing for the past 30 years. He has a great track record for 30 years. Anybody that has, most people that actually has talked junk about him in this situation would love the track record that he has, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, so. I think it comes down to like, that that personal piece, like if you yeah. if you fuck with somebody, you fuck with them, but that has nothing to do with their accomplishment. Ability, like you know what I mean. Like the end, they, the like, Cosby Show is a great show. Like, R. Kelly made some great podcast. music. We can have a, <laughs> but we can want more from people that we may support or be fans of. But at the end of the day, they don't owe us anything personally. Like they're not our friend. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like. I feel more of a sense of obligation from the people in my life, like my loved ones, people who actually know me, care about me on a day-to-day personal basis than people who don't know me. Why would you be caring about how I feel or what's going to make me think good of you or bad of you if you don't know me? So, you know, I think you it goes, me, like, it's kind of like the cancel shit, unless like you, you cannot support somebody if you want to, but it doesn't mean that they're, what they've done or accomplished just disappears. Like the Cosby show, it may not be on everybody's station, but it's still in syndication in places. 
It's still it's, a thing. It's, it's still an awesome show. Like, like it, thing that, like, take it away. Is like you, our, things our Kelly was a great musician. Yeah, you can't sick I, I human being. Recent history, great. Human. Like, just print all of the history. Like, if if you want to take it personally forever and ever, as long as you write articles, you can always add that personal piece in with the professional accolades that this person was a hall of fame of this 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 and this and this but they also did this you know that's fine if you want to do that but yeah from an institutional standpoint man that, that people rock yeah see, I, I feel the same way because people always trying to take away john jones accolades and he ain't this motherfucker is basically un, you can say he's under fucking defeated the only reason he lost his belt because they tended to he had a got caught on some bullshit on his personal life and had to get a belt up. He ain't never got beat for the motherfucking belt. When he gave the belt up, he just, huh, I want to go to a different weight class. I'm going to step out for a while so I get the match I want. I'm going to go get bigger. Here you go. Thing for him, like, unless they can prove Sure, he had alcohol problems. Sure, he had cocaine problems. He recognized his problems. He's trying to atone for them problems. Unless he was hmm. having matches, I don't care. Like Exactly. If you what were that? Match, all right, then you was affecting the actual competition, and then I think that that's when the UFC should stay. Okay. But other than that, man, like, man, just made too bad. Bad. <laughs> That doesn't, he still was whooping niggas' ass. He just was, it was dumb. And life was kicking his ass. I know I'm the <laughs> casual, I know I'm the casual UFC fan or whatever, but um, I didn't even know none of that until today about John Jones. The only thing about John Jones is that. He had some great fights when I seen him. So it yeah, can't right. be that awesome bad. Motherfucking fight. Awesome motherfucking fight. Awesome. But that could be because maybe the UFC has been such an underground cult thing for a while. If it was like as big as boxing, it might have that might have been blown up in the media a lot more or whatever. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. It might have been blown up could in the media be. more. And I would have heard Maybe. about it, but at the same time, I ain't heard nothing about it. And I would think I would at least encounter it one time. But at the same time, I don't be caring about people's personal lives or whatever. Like if I, I really don't, I, I really don't. Like if I if I listen to a song and I press play, I really don't care what you did on Wednesday at your mama house. I really don't. I don't. I don't nope. care if I. It, it really is. You, you you wouldn't have had no choice to know about it if it was a, yeah, exactly a champion boxer. Exactly, it would have been in the twenty four hour news cycle so much they would have pounded in your head. The fact yeah. that USC is not as household of a name that yeah that that was that's the issue. So John mm-hmm. Jones can kind of fly under the radar, whereas you know somebody like a uh, I guess I'm trying to think a Zab Judah or something would have. That everybody would have heard about that shit. Like what? Zam did what? See, did yeah. but at the same time, that might be a reason why they want to keep things the way they they are. Because I also feel like there's a um there's a part of the UFC where they like things the way they are because they're not like over or extra or flashy like um like WWE or it's not a whole bunch of politics like boxing pretty much or whatever. I, I've but heard that politics. aspect of but it's always not politics WWE, and everything. It's politics. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't politics, they wouldn't be no money. True. That's How do true. y'all feel about crossovers? Like crossover events like you had Conor McGregor against Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. How do y'all feel about mm-hmm. boxes against UFC fighters and shit like that? Uh, and crossover. I, I think it's dumb. I grew up playing Street Fighter. Unless, I unless, <laughs> unless the match is between a boxer that boxed 99% of their life and switched to MMA and then they switch back real quick to box somebody, I don't see where it makes sense. Because if you put a boxer in an MMA format, they are not going to be, they're going to be at a disadvantage. If you put an MMA yeah. fighter in a boxing format, they're going to be at a disadvantage. It's, it's such a different yeah. thought process. It's going to be one side of it. Way of attack. Not necessarily. Because it's going the, to be the, the, one of them. So. I think it'd be, I think it all depends on the skill set of, of said fighter or said MMA fighter. Now, if you put them in the boxing ring, 
the advantage is always most likely going to be on the fight on the 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 pugilist who's a pure pugilist but if you have a mixed martial artist who his striking ability is more than average say anderson silva where he fought uh i forgot the boxer he fought and, and fucked him up um forgot the fuck it's one of them chavez is i believe it was a chavez the junior anyone that fight but in the same token you have somebody like james tony against somebody like randy couture where it's in the other element where james tony loses but james tony had no background at all in nothing but boxing but i feel if you put james tony in the ring with randy couture where randy couture is pure wrestling james tony is going to decimate his ass you feel me because of the pure because of the different skill sets. I guess it depends on maybe what we define it as MMA too then. Because I look at Anderson Silva as more of a kickboxer. And I think that they they can translate because they use gloves. They are used to the weight of the gloves. The way the the bot the blocking scheme is very similar for upper body strikes for them. So it's a very easy conversion for them. The average MMA fighter is usually coming from some grappling background or some actual no. martial arts background without kickboxing experience from what I see. Or they just train in MMA. So they train in all of those disciplines, which means they're well-rounded, but they're not going to be as naturally used to boxing rules, boxing, what's allowed in boxing. Like, their movement is exactly. different. Mm. I, would, I would say they would, it would just have to be a part their skill their skill set like if their skill set matches with the boxer said boxer in in certain fields and it could seem like it it could fit or whatever then maybe or, or whatever but it's like i want things to be like street fighter but when you are think of it logically are, are we talking about generalities or are we talking about like specific fighters because if we're talking to generalities, then I, I'm going to err on the side of whichever format they in. That's the person that's going to have an advantage P- pretty much across the board. If you're talking about... Yeah, yeah. Fighters, on, 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 about on, 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 on majority on the majority basis, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say majority basis anytime. Because, I mean, you got you going to what you're best at. It's like putting a football player right. against a basketball player. Hey, you, you, you put the football player on the football, football player against a basketball player, he's going to be all good. You know? Talking about, like, if you're talking about a specific person, then, you know... Dog sign up, dog shine, the sunshine on any dog ass at some point or another. But oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. I same. think on, on a majority basis, if you look at a, a, a wide scale, if you mix them up and put them like you put any boxer in the cage, nine times out of ten, you are gonna lose unless you get that, that lucky punch. You feel me? Because it is a possibility. But then again, nine times out of ten, you put a MMA fighter in the boxer ring, he gonna. He gonna motherfucking lose because, like you said, the movements is different. One is used to moving your head. One is always moving your head. And one don't move your head because when you're in that you're in that, that cage, you ain't moving your head that much. Because you move your head, you might get hit with anything. Boxing, mm-hmm. you moving your head, you bobbing, you weaving, you constantly moving. You feel me? You stand. You, you, you ain't trying to be stationary. So that, like I said, like you said, majority of the time, you when you mix them up in either way. Whatever your specialty is, you're gonna win in because that's what you dwell in all the time. I, I just think it would be interesting to see more and more of more of them. If there's like more crossover fights, because you have some people who are in the in the <clears throat> mixed martial arts world who are more of a pugilist. They don't have a, a wrestling background. They don't have oh, they wrestling sucks, you feel me? And all they do is stand up. But they could be they could perfect it more where you have some motherfuckers like I see what's what's the, what's the champion name Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. That's a big white boy name. I would want to see his ass in the cage. If him, I would love to see him and Francis in the in the cage because he's actually bigger than that motherfucker. He's actually bigger than Francis. I, I don't see that going well. One <laughs> head kick is gonna be over. Like mm. it's, gonna, it's gonna be horrible. <laughs> Nigga knees gonna be beat the fuck up. We'll catch one of them side kicks or some shit to the knee, and this shit gonna be shabby. <laughs> and that nigga like six feet, and he already like lumbering and shit. Like I don't, I don't see that going well. 
I feel like I feel like it would be good for UFC to cross promote, but they would have to do it. They they would have to do it quite like. Do y'all find them fights entertaining? Like I don't I don't be depending depend on who it is. Like, they be boring as hell. Yeah, it depends on it 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 like the first few rounds who it is. trying to figure each other out and they, like man. What do you mean UFC fight? No, I'm talking about these cross, oh, yeah. like these cross. Oh, the cross fight? Oh, yeah. Like, that's just oh, yeah. Depending on who it is. Depending on who it is, like the Anderson Silver Charlotte, um, I believe it was the child, one of the juniors. I, I fuck with that shit because it was an actual true, like, true boxing match. It won't know, like, all right, I'm timid, I'm you timid. It was like, all right, we feel each other out for the first few seconds. All right, boom, we going. And it was true boxing. It was truly boxing each other. They won't just feel each other out for five, six rounds, they would actually box it. Now you have other shit. It's bullshit where you have like Beto Belfort against Holyfield and that was a fucking pure mockery of the sport of boxing. Boy, that should, should have never fucking happened at all. Um, that was bullshit. Now, I, that should have never, like I said, should never fucking happen. I'm, I'm pissed off I even put my eyes on that shit. <laughs> but, like, you feel me? Like, uh, absolutely. Like, it was hard. it was horrible. Like, that, that was a, a true, the lowest point of Evander Holyfield's career. Like, he should never participate in that shit. I'm sure he got a bag for this shit. Quick bag. Cool. We got a quick bag, but you, it's humiliating. Just, nah. I, feel I don't like even have a word for how pissed for that shit was. I feel like the spectacle sometimes is a lot more fun than the actual fight itself. Like the whole build up for it or whatever is kind of kind of yeah. is is um Floyd gonna win is more of that mm-hmm. and I think people have more fun with that than the actual day of and I almost feel that way with anything pretty much I, I, I sometimes is rare the occasions rare occasions where the fight kind of over outdo the hype or whatever. And then, you know, you have a Mike Tyson or something like that from time to time where it just seems like majority of the fights he ever been in, it, it lived up to the hype. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, it feels like it's more of a spectacle and more and people are more into the actual social part of the fight in the conversation of the fight than the actual fight itself. Because, mm-hmm. you know... And I would say also they're more into the aftermath and talking junk about the fight aftermath than the actual fight itself or whatever. But that was one of those things where that was the first time it happened. And every time mm-hmm. you have something that's it's the first time it happens, it's a high possibility that shit's gonna fuck up or not go the way. But no, it ain't the, that one the first time. It was just mm-hmm. because of the individuals involved. The first mm-hmm. time I believe was with James Tony and Randy Couture. No. That was the first crossover. Money Mayweather. It's because it's Money Mayweather, and then you got Conor McGregor. Them two loud mouth motherfuckers, and mm-hmm. they went on that tour and built it up more and more and more. Two dancers to me. That's what I feel. Like. I think it was the first one was back in Antonio Inoki and Muhammad Ali, or somewhere back in those days. Mm-hmm. 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 Still like. Doing wrestling movies, mm-hmm. still wrestling, and it was kind of like still. Yep. Yeah, you're right. We just we it, it's it's oversaturated, man. I think it that's the way it is. It's like these companies have so much talent to choose from. They just can't find a great hype. They great. They one Mike Tyson. They're one this that to build it up or whatever. Um, and, you know, but, it's harder, man. Like boxing, you can win on points, so you can knock a nigga out. You, can, it's more you can do to keep your title. Like MMA, mm-hmm. is so many ways you can lose. You can have a freak accident, and, mm-hmm. and, and like your whole shit shatter. So like, it, it's so much more that goes on. It's harder for them champions to even establish themselves. It's like, oh, get that undefeated mm-hmm. going. Like a lot of boxers would get them going. It's like they'll be like thirty and zero with 20, mm-hmm. 24 knockouts, and you know what I mean. So it's like. Oh, can this nigga keep this streak going? And MMA sometimes like the best fighter might be 20 and 3. Mm. So it's harder for some of the people to kind of ride that wave of them three losses mm-hmm. along the way. That's almost inevitable because it's really hard to just maintain a long 
undefeated streak in MMA without losing in some way, whether it be disqualification or something. Like, it's just hard. Like, it's so many ways you can lose on some fluke shit. Yeah. And can still be the best fighter, but lose to a fighter that's less than you just because they pull off a random reversal at the right time or they slip a punch and they think you know you're in a Kimura or some weird. Like, it's just... Oh. Oh, his foot oh, you slipped. the wrong step of the nigga hit a lucky punch and knock your ass out and yep, you pop back up. Like that. Yep. That's, that's breaking niggas' legs with them oh, side kicks to the knees. Like, you know, it's just weird stuff. Oh, that yeah. Happens, so it's like, oh, yeah. They need to ban that shit. They need to ban that shit. Nah. They need to ban that you goddamn you allow leg kicks and allow leg kicks or stop letting people kick the shit out of each other's legs. Like, at some point, you keep kicking somebody's leg. It was bound to happen. Shit, stop letting them kick in the leg. But if you're going to allow leg kicks, then allow all of it. Like, you mm-hmm. can't allow me to front kick a nigga in the gut, but I can't front kick nowhere else. I can the sag kick is a kick. I, I, I can I can roundhouse his leg as hard as I want to, but the front kick is too much. It's too valid. Man, these niggas is beating. Oh, no, it ain't all the front kick. No, it's that they, they aiming for that, that knee. They trying to because it ain't the anywhere to live because you can front kick a motherfucker anywhere. You feel me? Like that's what the thing right. motherfucker complaining is about is that they hitting they damn purposely hitting on the knee. But if a motherfucker like my thing is if you know a motherfucker gonna do that, you can train for that shit. God damn it, check that shit. Okay. <laughs> you right. know, well, you know oh, that's what he do. Okay, cool. Let's train for that shit. Cool. Okay. That's like you know a nigga. Okay, this nigga throw overhand right every time. Oh, train for that shit. You can train for that shit. Yeah, I mean it's a fight, man. At the end of the day, if you're gonna be in fight sports, like you can't ban, but so much like uh, you can't turn it into exactly. like just let them uh, look. Train to not get your ass whooped. If you get your ass whooped, that's kind of part of the the job. Like nobody asked you yeah. that you do that as your profession. You could have been a garbage man, sir. Could have got a four one k a pension and rolled on a bag of truck all day and picked up cans, but you chose to go in here. And get your ass with for a living. So go do that, sir. I don't. I don't want to hear. That. I'm so sick of these grown ups complaining about shit that they choose to do. You choose to go fight. This is the life you chose. I ain't never. I ain't never got in one fight in my life and then been mad if I left out the fight with a black eye or a, like nigga. It's a fight. Use a couple thousand. Go get you some surgery. I see you in a little bit when you come back because you're still making six figures, which is more than I make per year. So, nigga, ain't no sympathy for me. Get, get your first world problems up out of here and take your ragged ass knee and go get it. <laughs> I'm getting kicked in it. Yeah. Or, start, or do a job where you can't get, where you don't get kicked in the leg for, for a living. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like what <laughs> like literally part of your training is letting somebody kick you in the leg so you can toughen it up like nigga what I'll be down I- I'm sorry should get me mad too like football Ugh. don't hit don't don't tackle them nigga it's football part of the game is tackling make it flag then or don't play you have options in this I chose not to play because I personally don't want to get hit all the time. And have, you, <laughs> have, have you had to have any complaints about someone tackling you in the head? Mm-mm. Nope. Sure do do something that, that involves getting tackled in the head. Like, I, I don't want to hear it. To South, okay, Carolina, get... ball, to South Carolina with you. <laughs> Shit. Someone's going to jail tonight. I'm, I'm just over it, man. Like, what in the world? No more complaining about choices. You, you, if you make that choice, then get your knee shattered. Get a leg, get a metal leg. It seems to work in track and field. Them little tink tinks be fast as fuck. <clears throat> shit, get you one of them metal legs. Let a motherfucker kick that shit and break their shit. I bet they stop kicking their legs then. I thought you were talking about the stone cold knee brace. No, I'm talking about them uh blades. That them track runners be running on. Yeah, I've like, seen those. Tink, 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 tink. Have them looking like praying mantis. 
It looked like one of those, um, you know, those the, those uh, incense ashtrays or whatever with the little... <laughs> incense ashtray. Or it looked like it looked like one of those um, them shoe horns. <laughs> fit your foot in the shoe. No, it do though. That was a good. That's a good damn reference. That that, that they, they do look like two shoe horns. Mm-hmm. Shit. That's damn good, Pat. That is damn good. I tell you what else is damn good. Making sure that you support the partner. So please, if you like this conversation tonight. Make sure that you support by following us on YouTube and liking, comment, sharing, and subscribing. And if you want to support financially, go to Cash App, dollar sign partner tiers one, or buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners where you can become a member and get exclusive perks, or you can donate for as little as a dollar. And if you want to support by following us on any of your social media or just having a conversation with us, how can they do that, Pat? At T H E P O D N A S. That is the TikTok, that is the Twitter, that is the Instagram, and, fa- and on Facebook, we are Tiz Face Pat all the pot. Indeed, indeed. And mm-hmm. if they want to go ahead and support financially, but they want something in return, how can they get the Merchant Apparel Face? Well, as always, they can go to rtreclothing.com, 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 A-R- T-R-E clothing.com. Come check us out. Indeed, indeed. Spring lines coming. He's not, he's not gonna spell clothing. He's, no, he's we'll not. never spell clothing. Do the Ever. We started off talking about do the research. Do the research, people. Mm. Need, our, our people need to read more. But yeah, um, this has been another episode. What episode is this? 73? 73. Yo, we's getting fucking old. We's ancient. We got our AR, AARP membership. We's getting, uh, you know, discount, discounts and early breakfasts at, at IHOP and all that good shit. So, uh, here they, yeah, man. make sure you make take the time to join the conversation. Add your comments. Add your voice to the actual podcast by leaving us a voice message on Spotify or Anchor.fm. Or you can always make sure that you leave a comment below comment below if you're watching on youtube and as always man we have been the partners i have been one third of the partners your boy tiz and i've been along with the smoke person (laughs) it's the pet one here and i'm along with what's that in man's face and we out of here indeed man we's up out this i'm gonna turn this into a dance watch Peace out, motherfucker!